Moments of great change are rare and mysterious, and we're called to accept them. When the angel Gabriel appeared before Mary wreathed in his crimson robe and heavenly light, and told her she would carry the Son of God, he offered no explanation. She couldn't ask why me. It was unknowable. It was true. She had to accept it. That's a paraphrased quote from my brother. Uh, he recently went over to Asia. He's traveling around Asia for six months. Uh, and it's a quote he told me after dinner one night that his therapist gave him. He's with this therapist, I think, like six, seven years, very long time. He's a really old dude. I think he's like 85, something like that. Quite, quite old. I think approaching retirement, actually. And I think it's a really beautiful one. This guy's deeply religious, as you can probably tell with the <laughs> Christian undertones there. But I think it's an absolutely beautiful quote. And I honestly don't have much to explain past that quote today. I think I'm going to keep it quite short with what's said in that message. Because I think it's a really nice sort of stoic type mentality uh, to reacting to moments of great change within your life. I think, you know, life has a habit of kind of just kicking you down in the guts. These big things will come out of nowhere. You have absolutely no control of them. They'll just kind of hit you. Uh, the relationship will fall apart. You'll lose the job. Uh, someone will pass away. And you're just going to get, you're going to get fucking kicked down and you're going to get offered no explanation. There's no logical why. There's no logical what, like, why did this happen to me? You really are just left. And this is what I've called like an inflection point. In these moments of great change, you're kind of left there scrambling a little bit. I think even in terms of my last relationship breaking down, about probably like, for me, exactly a year ago. I remember one thing that caught me up in these endless thought cycles was just why? Why did it happen? It doesn't make sense. I don't understand why. Why, why did it happen to me? Why, why, like all these questions were just shooting through my head about it. Everything, I just, I just couldn't wrap my head around it from like a logical perspective. It just did not make sense to me. And it's often your detriment. It kind of just keeps you cemented in the same place. If you really fixate on the why, why, why? Uh, because I don't think there's a why to scenarios like this, especially something like a relationship. It's a lot of complex emotions going on there. You're not really going to have logic explain it to you very well because humans are irrational. Or we feel things that don't necessarily make sense and you kind of just have to learn to live with it. Um, I look back a year ago and I think I would have saved myself a lot of stress, a lot of anguish if I just fucking stopped with those like thought pans of why, 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 and just moved on a lot quicker, actually. And I just really like this quote. Because I think it's beautiful. And the quote, I think my brother would be fine if I said this. Uh, it's because I was talking about his. One of, he was in a relationship that ended in about October. Honestly, there are a lot of parallels between my relationship ending and his relationship ending. So when he told me that quote, it was on the bus home. It really resonated with me. I'll say it again. I'll say it one more time just so you can hear. Moments of great change are rare and mysterious and we're called to accept them. When the angel Gabriel appeared before Mary, wreathed in his crimson robe and heavenly light and told her she would carry the son of God, he offered no explanation. She couldn't ask why me. It was unknowable. It was true. She had to accept it. I just love that last line. She had to accept it. When we are kicked in the guts by life, there are two paths out of it. I've said this in my long ass video. There's two paths out of it. I see them as inflection points. You could one, let it keep you down, smother you down, hold your head underwater and just fucking wallow in self-pity. Let it can utterly consume you. Uh, you can keep thinking about like I was, the thought pan, the why, 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 why this happening? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, and kind of be stuck in a state of just almost nothing, a stagnation, or even worse, deterioration, moving backwards, right? Or you can take the other route. You can let it be the fire within you that can push you even harder. You just learn to accept that some things in life aren't going to make sense. And pushing to find out why, it probably isn't, you're not going to get a why. Especially things like a family member dying, you know, you can get caught up in like, why have happened there? Maybe something like survivor's guilt, all these other these complex emotions, you're just going to get wrapped up in them. And at some point, you kind of just have to detach yourself. And it's a really hard thing to do. I'm not saying it's easy at all. All these things are way easier said than done, but at some point, you just have to accept it. That last line of the quote, she had to accept it. Mary had to accept Jesus being put in her by divine intervention, and she could ask no questions about it. She simply was going to bear Christ. All right, you know, we're just not given answers to things sometimes. Even if you're not religious, I'm not religious either, but I still think that's a beautiful, beautiful quote. You just have to learn to accept things. You have to have this kind of stoic mentality, you know. Um, Stoicism is not something I've talked about a lot on this channel, but it's something I've read pretty broadly about. I've read Marcus Aurelius' Meditations, which I'd recommend, and I've read Ryan Holiday's Ego is the Enemy. He does some good stoic stuff, but I think Stoicism is a fantastic just kind of thought uh, thought system to move through life with in the back of your head. Because there's just so many externalities in life you will have never have an ounce of control over. Uh, I think even sometimes in terms of YouTube, a lot of people watching my channel want to become YouTubers. And one thing I'd say is a stoic mentality is probably one of the most powerful things you can have. Because you can only do what's in within your power. You can't control external circumstances. So when I talk about YouTube with this, I always think of it like 
you can pour your heart and soul into a video. You could do as much as work into it as you want, hundreds of hours, right? And it probably will do well in the algorithm. If you spend a lot of time on something, I can almost guarantee you in the long term, your videos will start doing well, right? But in the short term, a video might flop. You might spend hundreds of hours on a project just for it to get piss or views. And that could be debilitating. But this is why I like about Storsum. It teaches you to not fixate on these external factors. You can't control if the algorithm pushes your video or not but you can control the fulfillment you derive from that video, enjoying the process of making it. Pouring your heart and soul into that video, the act of itself is a beautiful thing. You should derive fulfillment from that. And I suppose that the, the video doing well after that should just be the cherry on top, realistically. I mean, we're all human. I still get caught up in the views. Come on, I'm not trying to say we're all perfect, but I think it, it's just good to more more seek like um, fulfillment within the process, within something you control, rather than having all your happiness and your satisfaction be contingent on an external factor like the algorithm pushing your video. You just have to learn to roll with the punches here. And if you can do that, if you truly can have this stoic mindset where nothing can kind of beat you down, because you recognize, I can't control this, so there's no point in worrying about it, right? Then you'll, you're untouchable. You know, if a 100-hour project flops, guess what? Moving on to the next 100-hour project. That one might get 10 million views, you know? If you truly move through life with this attitude of accepting the things that come in your way and being able to move past them, of course, always easier said than done. I really think you're kind of indestructible. And that's why I love this quote so much. You'll have these massive moments, these massive huge things that will completely upend your life. The rug will be pulled from beneath you. But the one thing that remains constant in that is your mindset. You can choose to accept it, you won't get explanations for these horrible things happening to you, but what you can have control over is how you interpret them, how you respond to them, how your mindset adapts to them. And that's truly, I think, one of the greatest skills. And one thing I'm really recognizing as I get older as one of the most powerful things you can take through life. Things won't go your way. You'll get fucked over a long life. But if you can have the maturity and the strength to just acknowledge that and say, this is out of my control, I'm going to keep pushing forward. I honestly don't see how you can't succeed in the goals you want to achieve. That's all from me this week. I honestly didn't expect to take this direction. I just want to say that quote because I really, really like that quote. Uh, I might write it as the pinned comment just so you can copy and paste it easily. That's all from me. I uh, hope you're doing well. I've been doing well lately. I'm in a little bit of a... I've been... <laughs> I've pushed my sleep schedule to the side for the first time in like a year. So I'm experimenting with just how I used to live of like sleeping at two and wake up at 10. And I've been doing a lot, a lot of... Getting a lot of work done, but I am feeling kind of shitty. So I think tomorrow I'm going to reset my sleep schedule. I was kind of just testing it, but... Yeah, I think we'll get back to that. But I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. And you know the drill. Farewell, Elite Level Gamer.